All right, Brian, let's talk about the parts. You got stock piston and pin, and you got the piston we're gonna be using and the pin, and there is a huge difference just looking at the two. Yeah, ab absolutely. Again, you know, the stock piston, cast, hyperutectic, very typical of today's production parts. It's a 9.86 pin diameter, just under the 990, um, and uh, a very typical ring pack for, for, uh, for today's application. So, you know, kind of heavy, but not overly heavy, uh, really a well-designed part for the intended use. Um, it is a tapered pin as well from the factory. Um, when we look at what we're doing now, we're going to be spinning this thing north of 9,000 RPM. So we, obviously we have a little bit uh, more valve relief in it. Um, it is a billet piston. It does have gas ports. Um, the pin diameter on this is about 20 millimeters right. versus about 25 uh, for the stock. Uh, pin and of course quite a bit shorter. Um, all these things help because again the lighter everything is as you're going to the higher RPMs and you're reversing acceleration right. at the top in TDC and BDC you're putting less load in all the parts too by the lighter weight so then you know you can also to be open doesn't necessarily have to be as strong even though you're spinning it a lot higher. Uh, this does have very common today on an you know on a I don't want to say max effort, but on a, on a serious NA build, it has the 0.7, 0.7 millimeter rings in it. Uh, so just in case some of you guys out there aren't up on piston technology, the factory piston is also designed for durability, economy. It's designed to go a couple hundred thousand miles in the engine. Um, so it's got, it's got to be robust in, a, in order to get the job done. Absolutely. When you're building a race engine, those things, not that you don't want the thing to be durable, but it's a different kind of durable. It's got to withstand high RPM, but an engine like this, you might make 60, 70, 100 runs, and then you might take it apart and look at it. So ultimate life of certain parts and components isn't really necessary or the goal of the build. You can change things out over time. So like this is a much smaller pin and a lighter pin, but it does have a robust wall thickness that helps it make up some of that. And then the back of this piston, as you can see, has an architecture to it. So even though it's a smaller, lighter piston, it does have strength. And Brian, I'm assuming that you've moved the upper ring land up. And then also uh, to explain, Brian mentioned the smaller uh, thickness of the rings, which that reduces drag in the engine. So when those rings are dragging up and down the cylinder, the, th the thinner they are, the less drag, but you still can get the, the ring seal because of this gas porting. Brian, you want to explain exactly what gas porting is? Yeah, gas porting very simply is the top, uh, the combustion pressure goes behind the top ring and then pushes that out. So it puts more pressure on the combustion cycle against the back of the ring towards the bore. Not only are these, you know, very thin, uh, width-wise, but the radial thickness is also very thin to get that very, very light tension, uh, except when it needs it, when, i.e. the gas porting. Exactly, and if you look up close in this piston, you can see there are holes drilled on the face of the piston. That's where the gas comes through, and it forces itself and basically pushes that top ring out but it only does so on the power stroke or under compression. So the other three strokes, the ring basically has less tension to go up and down. Yeah, and again, as you said, the, the main intention is during, uh, during combustion when you're getting that, those high cylinder pressures, you know, and that you actually get enough pressure behind there to, to make a difference. Right. All right, let's talk about these connecting rods because even to the naked eye, there is a huge difference. Obviously stock, obviously not. And this one is way lighter. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, stock rod, powdered metal rod. I think Ford's been having these in production since somewhere around 1991. Uh, works great. Um, good for manufacturing, and of course, machined in the in the plant uh, with bushed uh, pin uh, as well. So, standard. This rod weighs about 660 grams. If we go to the aftermarket rod that we'll be using for this build. Again, very typical of an aluminum rod. It's the Honda Rod Journal uh, size on it, again, with a very small wrist pin. Um, the nice thing about the aluminum rods is, you know, it's very easy uh, to get custom lengths, custom sizes, so that, you know, when you're building a motor like this that's designed, you know, for you know, a specific purpose, uh, you can order them and get what you need uh, right. fairly quickly. 
is the, is the Honda Rod Journal, it, it's common in racing. You hear that term all the time. Is that due to the, the actual size and the fact that you can get bearings in that size? Absolutely, yeah. So they, you know, that, that's key. So bearings are something that aren't easy to get custom made. Right. So you really need to use off the shelf. And using the Honda Rod um, Journal, there's a lot of companies that make bearings for that. So to be open, it's even easier than running the stock stuff because they're, you know, it's a coyote, same as the coyote. So you've right. got a couple of us using them, but it's not like an industry standard where a vast majority of people are using it. Right, because you, you hear the term Honda rods or Honda journals, and some people might think, oh, my God, it's got Honda parts and a Godzilla, but it's just the journal size. And the reason for that is because it makes it real easy to get bearings. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a very good clarification. Absolutely. And I think uh, I didn't uh, give the weight of this, uh, but I said the stock rod is about 660 grams. This is about 460 grams. Right. And getting into some of the reasons, Brian, on why you want a light rotating assembly and maybe talk about the bob weights a little bit. Sure. So again, light rotating assembly, while it doesn't make more steady state horsepower, what it does do is as you're accelerating, there's less inertia for the combustion cycle to overcome. Right. So we'll actually, you know, you hear about lighter weight stuff will rev quicker, like an aluminum flywheel versus a steel flywheel. That that's the benefit. And then in addition to that, as we talked about, when you have lighter piston, lighter pin, when you're at the TDC and, uh, and BDC and you're reversing direction, especially at TDC where the piston wants to go, basically gets thrown, you know, pull the rod apart. Right. There's less weight there. So less forces that you have to worry about uh, uh, offsetting. Now, bob weights, very interesting. So the stock setup, you know, as I mentioned, the piston's about 495 grams, about 140 grams for the, uh, for the wrist pin. Your connecting rods, about 660 grams. Of course, you have to worry about the big, uh, you know, the, the big end and the small end weights when you do the bob weights. Right. But it comes out about 1912 for the bob weight of the stock, uh, of the stock engine. The engine that we're putting together here with, a 300, with about a 400 gram piston, a little bit under, a 90 gram pin, a little bit under, and a 457 gram rod, this bob weight is 1,390 grams. Significantly lighter. And if you're not familiar with the term bob weight, it has to do with when you're balancing the rotating assembly. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, and again, for an engine with, uh, that's 474 cubic inches, 1390, you know, is, is actually pretty light. So we're, we're pretty happy where that all came out. Yeah. And again, talking about that lightweight stuff, imagine, because anything you are trying to accelerate, especially in drag racing from a dead stop, even though the engine's not at a dead stop, you're talking about having to move mass. So the less mass, the quicker it can accelerate, essentially. Think about it this way, Brian. If I asked you to do a sprint from that side of the room to that side of the room, and then you had to put a 100-pound backpack on your back, you're going to be faster without the backpack. So anytime you can trim weight off something that's going to be accelerated, you're going to be able to accelerate faster. 